Hi, my name is Rupert Bradley, and today we're going to be demonstrating how to carry out a pre-start machine inspection on a JCB compact loader. We'll also be looking at the machine's controls and how to operate them safely. Before starting the inspection, make sure the loader arms are on the ground, the machine is in neutral and that the part brake is on. Then secure the articulation pin. Move to the front left hand tyre, checking for signs of any damage. Look out for bulges, cuts or excessive wear and embedded objects in the tyres such as nails or bits of scrap metal. Also look out for any air leaks or punctures. Incorrect tyre pressures will affect the machine's stability. On all wheeled loaders, tyre pressure should be higher on the front tyres to cope with the additional weight when the bucket is loaded. It's good practice to check the pressures regularly to avoid accelerated tyre wear or unsafe operation. When doing this, always refer to the tyre pressure chart in the operator's manual before inflating the tyres. Reinstall the valve caps firmly to prevent dirt from entering the valve. Continue the checks on the other tyres as you move around the machine. As you move around the machine, remove any dirt or debris, especially from round the loader end linkage points and pivot pins. Inspect all steelwork for signs of damage. Pay particular attention to the pivot point weld and check the pivot points are correctly in place and secure. Continue to check for damage or missing parts as you move around the machine. When using hydraulic attachments, take the time to clean the auxiliary connection points. This will help protect against any hydraulic contamination. Whilst you're at the front of the machine, take this opportunity to grease the loader end. Do this regularly and after washing or steam cleaning. Two strokes with the grease gun should be enough. Stop when grease appears at the joint. There's 14 grease points on this machine. Always refer to the operator's manual as some grease points may be out of sight. As a tip, it's recommended you wear gloves when greasing the machine, as grease from your hands could later be transferred to the machine's controls, resulting in unsafe operation. As we can see, this machine is fitted with a quick hitch. Always check the attachment pickup points and pin locking mechanism is secure. Check the toe plate of the attachment for any signs of damage. Look out for signs of uneven wear, as this could indicate low tire pressure on one side of the machine. Whilst we're at this point of the machine, it's worth noting the location of the tie down points. There's two on the front axle and two on the rear. Refer to the tie down procedure in the operator's manual when preparing the machine for transport on a trailer. Remember, always fit the central safety pin when transporting the machine. Continuing the inspection, check the cab glass and mirrors for cracks, reporting and replacing items if damaged. Check all the lamp lenses, visually inspect the hydraulic hoses and fittings for damage or kinks. To access the fuses and relays, open this side panel and remove this cover. If a fuse blows, find out why and correct the fault before installing a new one. You will also find the cab air filter here. If required, you can shake out loose dust from this filter. Replace if severely blocked or damaged. Check for oil, fuel, and coolant leaks below the machine. This also ensures you have checked no one is working under the machine before beginning operation. The mesh on the engine cover prevents larger particles being drawn into the cooling pack. Material small enough to pass through this should also pass through the fins of the cooling pack to prevent it plugging up. If material does build up on the mesh, Always clean it off when carrying out your inspection. The cooling packs are stacked together for ease of access. From right to left, we have the charged air cooler, engine cooler, hydraulic cooler, and the fuel system cooler in the front. The AC cooler is located behind the cab if specified. Check the cooling packs are clean and undamaged. Moving on to the engine air filter, Check the dust valve is not blocked by squeezing it. It's good practice to remove the filter cover to make sure the air holes are clear. Whilst here, you can also check the primary air filter, shaking out loose particles if required. The secondary filter cannot be cleaned out and must be replaced according to the service schedule stated in the operator's manual. The primary fuel filter separates any water from the fuel. If there is water but no sediment in the bowl, turn the tap to drain the water out. If sediment is visible, the filter may need changing. Refer to the operator's manual on how to do this. Check the coolant level is above the minimum required amount and top up if required. Check the engine oil using the dipstick. To do this, remove the dipstick, wipe it with a clean paper towel, reinsert it and check the oil is between the minimum and maximum indicators. There is a remote engine oil fill point here for ease of access. 
the engine requires between 11 and 12 litres of oil. To drain the oil, undo this plug and drain into a suitable pan. The engine oil filter is located here and is changed every 500 hours. This is in line with the engine oil service intervals. The machine battery isolator key is located at the rear end of the machine. Depending on the specification or local legislation, the key may be inside or outside the engine bay. Remove the isolator key to secure the machine when not in use and when carrying out any maintenance. Removing the key also prevents the battery from draining if a light is left on, for example. Reinsert the isolator key when returning to work. The battery is easily accessible at the rear left-hand side of the machine. It's under the engine cover to keep it clean and protected. On this side of the machine, you will also find the hydraulic fill point. Check the hydraulic level using this sight gauge. The fluid level should be roughly in the center of the sight gauge. If necessary, top up the system using the recommended hydraulic oil. Ensure the fill point is clean before removing the cap to prevent dirt from falling in the tank. Check the window washer fluid level and top up if required. The diesel fill point is located here with a storage capacity of 80 litres. The machine requires ultra low sulphur diesel, or in other words, the same type of diesel as used in cars. Clean fuel prevents the fuel injectors from clogging up. Do not use dirty diesel or mixes of diesel and water, otherwise this will cause serious engine faults. It's recommended refueling the machine at the end of the day or shift to avoid condensation buildup in the fuel tank. You can now remove the articulation locking pin. Before entering the cab, make sure the steps and handrails are undamaged and free from clogged dirt. Remove any rubbish that may interfere with the pedals. Clean the windows, light lenses and rear view mirrors if required. Always face the machine when entering and exiting the cab, maintaining three points of contact. Remove or secure all loose items in the cab. Rops and Fops is built into the machine as standard, but this does not guarantee your safety. Once seated and before starting the engine, always fasten your seatbelt. Emergency exits are designed into the machine in the event of the machine overturning. The type of emergency exit will depend upon the specification of your machine. Read the operator's manual to understand the exit route before starting the machine. Adjust the seat and steering column so that you can comfortably reach all the controls. As a measure, you should be able to fully apply the brake pedal without having to stretch. Set the rear view mirror and wing mirrors up to give you good rearward visibility. The front display informs you of the machine fuel level, engine coolant temperature, hydraulic status, operator presence indicator, engine RPM, service icon if there are less than 20 hours to the next service interval, time, machine hours, travel speed, the direction of travel and the current gear selection, indication of any lights in use, and any machine error alerts. Use these controls to set up the machine's display. To enter the setup mode, push the enter button and scroll down simultaneously. Then turn the starter key to the ignition position, but do not start the engine. To start the machine, ensure the battery isolator is inserted. Ensure the part brake is on, the machine is in neutral, and constant flow and high flow switches are set to off. Turn the key to the ignition position for two to three seconds to preheat the engine before turning the key fully. Release the key as soon as the engine starts. Once the engine has started, check that all the warning lights have gone off. If any warning lights fail to go off or come on during operation, stop the machine as soon as it is safe to do so. The loader arms are controlled by the joystick. Pull back to lift, push forward to lower, move left to crowd, and right to dump. You will find the machine's forward, neutral, and reverse selection conveniently located on the underside of the joystick. Momentary auxiliary hydraulic controls are controlled here. The speed switches are located on the top of the joystick. Press the left hand switch for low speed for use when loading. This provides a max speed of 6 km per hour. Press the right hand side switch to shift to high speed mode. Use this when travelling for example. This increases the travel speed to 20 km per hour. This machine can be fitted with diff lock. Diff lock is engaged by pressing and holding this switch. It is then disengaged when the switch is released. 
the multi-purpose steering column stalk controls the turn signals, windscreen wiper, the windscreen washer, and the machine's headlights. Pushing the button on the left-hand side of the steering column will sound the horn. The rest of the switches are laid out next to you. Here you will find joystick isolation, hazard warning lights, side lights and headlights, rear fog lights if fitted, constant flow if fitted, high flow if fitted, the smooth ride system if fitted, smooth ride is switched off and on like so. This helps retain material in the bucket and provides a smoother ride for the operator. The rear window wiper, front and rear work lights, beacon, the rear auxiliary, cab interior light, the heater system or air conditioning if fitted are controlled by these dials. There's an in-cab 12 volt auxiliary power socket to power or charge electrical accessories. In temperatures below minus 5 degrees, the machine may not respond properly to control movement. Allow at least 10 minutes warm up time with the engine at half throttle. Operate the arms and bucket services to warm up the hydraulics. The accelerator pedal is located on the right hand side of the footwell, whilst the brakes are located on the left hand side. The brake pedal doubles up as an inching pedal when partially depressed. This allows engine RPM to be increased via the accelerator whilst maintaining a low travel speed. Pressing the pedal down further will apply the brakes. Test the foot brake works before putting the machine to work. These loaders have a tight turning circle of 40 degrees, ideal for operating in tight spaces. When traveling, always reduce the travel speed before turning to maintain machine stability. The current speed mode is displayed on the front display. Always stick to the site speed limits. If your machine features the highway mode option, you can reach speeds up to 35 km per hour on the 407 and 40 km per hour on the 409. Highway mode is not an option on the 406. To change to highway mode, travel in high speed or hair mode at an approximate forward speed between 6 and 20 km per hour. When a plus symbol is displayed next to the hair symbol on the dash, push the gear change switch on the right hand console. The machine then shifts to the highway mode. This is then indicated on the front display. To change back to the hair mode, travel in highway mode with an approximate forward speed between 6 and 10 km per hour. The minus symbol will then be displayed next to the highway symbol. At this point, push the gear change switch again to change back to hair mode. To operate this, push and hold while you operate the auxiliary controls. This will release the attachment. To lock the attachment, operate the auxiliary controls only. This will push out the locking pins and secure the attachment. Check the attachment is secure. Remember to carry out this operation close to ground level. Use these reference points to make sure the bucket is level on the ground. To retrieve the maximum load every time, drive into the pile and lift before crowding the bucket. This transfers the weight onto the front axle, allowing you to drive further into the pile. Check behind you before switching the machine to reverse. And remember, always keep the site clean and tidy. This helps maintain good stability. These machines are versatile, highly maneuverable pieces of equipment with safety features built in. However, it's up to you to understand the machine before putting it to use. Always refer to the operator's manual if you're unsure of anything.